What's up, y'all? I'm out here at the range, as you can see back behind me. Been out here today just having some fun, taking care of a couple of things I needed to get done. And I figured I might as well knock this little test out before I head out of here. Now, as you can see, we're missing half of the jelly contraption out here because all we're going to do today is chrono some rounds. I'm just going to chrono several different 10 mil rounds that's basically just range ammo. So here's what we got to work with out here. I've got seven different brands of ammo out here. Like I said, all of it is just ball ammo, just range stuff, nothing special to it at all. And probably not many of them are going to be up to any kind of speed that I would call 10 mil speed. But let's run through them real quick and then we'll find out what they are moving. So starting here with the Cellier and below, this one just 180 grain FMJ. As you can see, flat nose there, copper jacketed, brass cased, 180 grain FMJ. Doesn't have any kind of ballistics at all on the box on this one. And this one has a, a large primer in it. And then next up's going to be the Blazer. Pretty much the same thing here. 180 grain FMJ, brass cased, copper jacketed with the flat nose on that one. Again, no ballistics on the box at all and then next again pretty much the same thing 180 grain fmj this is the ammo ink this time so same deal here brass cased uh copper jacketed flat nose now this one does have some ballistics on it it's calling for a muzzle velocity of 1190 feet per second and then moving on along next is this center fire nxg stuff this next gen lead free ball this is i believe i want to say this is a monolithic round like a spun copper uh projectile it's also a flat nose there now this is only 125 five grains so these ought to be moving on out like i say i'm pretty sure these are a solid spun round but i'll leave a, a note up here if it's something different and let me back up just a second as far as these primers this blazer actually has a small primer in it this ammo ink has a large primer and this center fire has a large primer so so far the only small primer has been this blazer so next up we got the arms Corps usa again 180 grain fmj now this one's brass cased and actually brass jacketed there it's still a flat nose and and this one also large primer and once again no ballistics on the box for this one and then moving on along again next we got the ppu now this is a plated jacket on this one it's 170 grain but still same thing brass case uh copper plating on it flat nose now this one's got a really really sharp defined flat nose on it so interesting to see that and again large primers and no velocity on the box and then the last one we got here is the pmc bronze 10 mil now this is a 200 grain fmj here and the velocity is saying a thousand feet but same deal on it brass case copper jacketed flat nose and a large primer in this one and as for the tool we're using today it's going to be the good old glock 20 with the 4.6 inch barrel so this one might not be too exciting but it should definitely be some good info to check out um i don't expect good speeds out of any of these i don't think that any of these are going to live up to what i consider 10 mil speeds and personally i wouldn't even use these to train with i don't understand why anybody would want weak weak ammo like this to do any kind of training when if what you're going to carry is is actual 10 mil speeds and 10 mil power you just you're really defeating the purpose if you're training with something that's not even close to what you're going to carry in my opinion but anyway that's enough talking about it let me get this stuff set up and let's check out how fast these things are moving all right let's see if we can get some speeds on all these things y'all i'm gonna do a five round average on each one after i'm done with each one i'll go through and go through the info for you and show you the high low average and extreme spread and then when i'm done with all seven i'll try to put up a screen that's got the averages of all of them at the same time but we'll start with this 180 grain s and b and see what it's doing i don't expect much out of this one i'll just tell you 1055 1051 1050 oh got an error 1051 again let me get one more round all right last one and 1057 so what i can say about those is they definitely not no 10 mil speed but they are very consistent so let's check that info all right so on the s and b's we got an average of 1052 an extreme spread of seven so incredibly consistent and a standard deviation of two so like i say very consistent ammo right here let's move on to the blazers all right here we go with the cci blazers remember these were the only ones that had small primers in them all the rest of them had large primers Got 1087, 1105, 1107, 1097, 
and 1111. So definitely faster, more power out of these than the SMB. Let's check this info. All right, so that time from the Blazer, we got a five round average of 1101, an extreme spread of 24, and a standard deviation of eight. So again, not bad consistency on these. Let's move on along. All right, next up is this Ammo Ink. Again, 180 grain. Now this was one of the few that had the velocity on the box and they were claiming 1190. So now I bet we don't see it, but maybe they'll prove me wrong. Got 1105, 1130, 1135, 1140, and 1139. So we definitely didn't hit the 1190. Pretty consistent all but that first one. Let's check that data. All right, our five round average that time was 1129. The extreme spread was 35 and the standard deviation was 12. So let's move on along and check out that center fire. All right, let's check out this center fire. Now this is that light stuff, 125 grains. So it should be the fastest of all pretty easily. Let's see what they are moving here. Got 1269, 1264, 1275, 1276, and 1253, that's definitely an odd recoil on that. Um, lighter, maybe just different, just a weird recoil on that. Let's check that data. All right, so our five round average that time was 1267. Definitely faster, but for 125 grain, 10 mil, that's actually pretty pathetic if you ask me, but 1267 on the velocity. The extreme spread was 23 and the standard deviation was eight. So let me get this reset and let's check out the next one. All right, next up is the arms core, 180 grain full metal jacket i got a feeling these might be moving pretty decent but let's see what happens here i'm probably totally wrong 1107 1083 yeah i was totally wrong 1093 1089 and 1100, so let's check that data. All right, so the five round average on the arm score is 1,094, extreme spread was 24, and the standard deviation was eight. So let me reset it and the PPU's up next. All right, here we go with the PPU. Remember, this is 170 grain on this, so be interesting to see what these are moving. A lot of times this PPU stuff's loaded kind of hot. Nah, not this time. 994, 1,027. 1,023, 1,058, and 1,012. Definitely not loaded hot. Let's check that data. All right, so our five round average that time was 1,022. Extreme spread was 64, and the standard deviation was 21. So only one left is the PMC bronze. Let me reset it and let's check that one out. All right, last one here, the PMC Bronze 200 grain FMJ. So this is the heaviest out of a bunch. Velocity on the box on this was saying 1,050. So we'll see how close it actually gets to that. Curious to see what this one feels like being the 200 grainer. All right, a little, little bit more maybe, 969. Duplicate 969. 960. 981. And 953, so pretty slow, which would make sense since it had the heaviest projectile, but let's check that data. All right, we didn't even break a thousand on that stuff right there. The five round average was 966. The extreme spread was 28 and the standard deviation was nine. So some pretty interesting info out of all these rounds out here today. Let me put some info up on the screen. I'll show you all the average and the uh, energy on all of them and then we'll wrap this up. All right, y'all, I'm gonna wrap it up right there for this one. Like I said, nothing really too exciting out here, but definitely some good info. So obviously what we can see out here is that Ammo Inc. takes the win easily. That, the uh, Arms Core, and the Blazer were the only three that were at or above 1100 even. The rest of them were under 1100 by a significant amount, and the PPU even under 1000. So the rest of those are absolutely terrible. Now, as far as those three that, that hit 1100 and went above 1100, um, I mean, I suppose that if you're out here, 
here just getting basic repetitions in with your 10 those aren't really that big of a deal to train with because they're not all that much less than something full power but i can tell you right now you run this stuff out here either one of them and then you load up with some buffalo bore or some really hot underwood and it is a world of difference the feel of it is completely different so that's why i say in my opinion i don't get using some of this weak stuff even for training purposes out here unless you're just incredibly new to the firearm itself and you just want to get the handling and mechanics of it down but as far as practicing with this stuff because you want something to feel similar to your carry around if you're carrying true 10 mil you ain't even gonna be close with this stuff but let me know what y'all think about it do you have a different opinion and think it's okay to train with this much much weaker ammo than what you're gonna carry with or are you like me and feel like there's really no sense in practicing and training with this weaker stuff and when it's gonna be a whole different world when you actually change it to your carry ammo but if you did enjoy this video reach down and hit that thumbs up subscribe to the channel and make sure you got your notifications turned on so you don't miss anything when i upload it take a second and check out those affiliate links in the video description if you shop through amazon hit up my storefront link first you'll go right through amazon just like normal from there doesn't cost you any extra money and anything you buy anywhere on the site after that i get a kickback from them towards the channel same deal with those axle links down there if you're looking for some really nice ear pro check out these gs extreme pros i absolutely cannot say enough good about these things hit up that link down there and you can save a lot of money instead of going straight to their site like always i appreciate all my range gang members and every single one of y'all out there for supporting the channel like y'all do tons of good stuff headed y'all's way so make sure you're on the lookout for that and in the meantime stay safe stay prepared and i'll see you soon